Well, I have to say, I'm actually very pleasantly surprised with what Bissell was able to do. So, a little backstory behind this machine. Um, I really had no intention of buying this, hence why, you know, I didn't bring anything up like that in the last gen Power Force review. Really didn't want to get one of these, had no desire to look at one. But the trusty old first gen Whirlwind that I had in my grandparents' house uh, to take care of their basement is slowly but surely starting to die out after years of neglect and lots of fine dust going through to the motor. So you can't really get parts for them anymore. It needs a new brush roll anyway. A new brush roll is half the cost of one of these. So I just went out and picked this up. I would have probably gotten another Elite Cyclonic, but I didn't want to pay that much for a machine that's just going to be used in their basement and kind of trashed and neglected. Uh, especially when I'm not there. So I went out and just picked this up from Walmart on a whim. And really, Bissell has left me ple uh, pleasantly surprised. So I was really thinking this was going to be like a lot of the Dirt Devils, where the Featherlight used to be a pretty well put together and decent machine, it and the Breeze too, its current replacements that are on the market now are cheaper and more inferior in absolutely every way. This, however, actually has some improvements to the design and surprisingly doesn't feel all that much cheaper than the outgoing Power Force. In some ways it actually feels a little bit more premium. So, at least the first thing that I noticed right off the bat that I enjoy is instead of having just the old pull-off cover, which I've never been a fan of those, you actually have a release latch that you press in, and it's hard to do this one-handed, but press in and pull, and your bag door comes off. Instead of this being all gloss black plastic, like the outgoing one, this is a little bit nicer of a textured matte color. And I've replaced, yet again, the horrible 1 in 7 Febreze bag with a HEPA Y bag, which doesn't really quite fit all that well in here, but it seals well enough. You've got your tiny pre-motor filter down there, which you probably can't see all that well. Five height adjust settings. Same easy disassembly of the nozzle on either side if you need to throw this entire thing practically in the sink for cleaning. One thing I'm not crazy about is how far these cord hooks seem to stick out from the rest of the chassis, but time will tell whether or not that's a true inconvenience. Your carrying handle moves from the back up into here. You've got a pretty similar hose to the one it's on the last power force. It's a little bit different in the way it attaches. This one just clicks into place and twists when you're assembling it, whereas the outgoing power force, it's still for clog removal, things like that, you could twist to remove it, but you actually had to screw in the bracket that it twists into. This is still molded, molded as part of the body. You get, instead of the old combo upholstery and dusting brush, it has been on a lot of Bissells for many years, you get their much more modern, I guess you could say, version of that. It's a uh, mainly a dusting brush with a little bit too stiff bristles to actually be a dusting brush, but still too soft to be an upholstery tool. Uh, but it does work halfway decently. It's better than a lot of machines that have that. I've got one like it on the uh, Pure Pro. And then you've got a very short extension wand and a very stubby crevice tool that's basically useless. Other than that, you still have the horrible quality clear lower hose that I'm sure will rip and crack through in a short period of time for the average consumer. It'll be interesting to see if this pedal release fails as often as it did on all the old power forces and similar machines to it that had issues. And then I'm going to recline this, excuse the poor view. 
The other thing that I find interesting is this technically doesn't have a post motor filter. Now, why I say technically is, and you probably won't be able to see it uh, from the lighting here, but it's got a filter over the exhaust made of basically the same exact material that the outgoing power force had. Now, the difference is on the outgoing power force, you know, when that got clogged up with all kinds of dust and carbon dust emissions from the motor, you could replace it. This one, you can't. It's just sealed behind this grill. There's no way to take this grill off without, you know, disassembling the entire machine to get to it. But that's about my, my thoughts and my views on this. I really quite enjoy this machine. I'm not too fond of some of the things, obviously, and I'm not too fond of the power button being moved to a foot switch from being on the side, but there are a lot worse things that they could have done with this machine like other manufacturers have. So let's give this a quick test run, and you guys can hear how it sounds. <laughs> So honestly, it sounds just like the outgoing power force. There's no real difference in that to me. The only other thing I want to check... Yeah, this is interesting. So it sounds very similar to the last ones that I unboxed, but it only has an 8 amp motor instead of the 12 amp. Still looks to use the same exact brush roll, just has blue bristles on it. Obviously uses one and seven bags. Alternate is Hoover Y if you want HEPA, although you kind of have to stuff them in. And EnviroCare generics with no rubber seal around the collar fit very, very loosely, but from what I can tell so far, they seem to lock in place tightly enough to A, not let dust escape, and B, not fall off the bag mount. But once I take it in the basement, we'll see how well that works out. So yeah, that's that's about it for these. If you have any questions for me, let me know and I'll be more than happy to respond.